Hello and welcome to this course on an introduction to networking technologies uh, brought to you by i &E. and I am Keith Bogart and I will be your instructor for this series of videos. So let me start by talking a little bit about who this course is intended for and then I'll talk a little bit more about what I'm going to cover in this. So if I move forward a little bit. So if you already know my name, it's probably because you're already an i &E member and you've been watching some of my CCNA or my CCNP series of videos. But i &E management came to me a while back and they said, you know what, Keith, we'd really like you to create uh, a series of videos that are sort of like before the CCNA videos. Something for people who really don't know anything about computer networking who are maybe you know familiar with working on a PC and they know there's something called a network, but they're sort of dipping their feet into the water as far as what kind of careers there are out there in the computer industry. And as far as computer networking, what does that look like as a career? And how would they get into it? And is this something they even want to pursue to begin with? So sort of like a precursor to the, the CCNA series of videos. And so that's what this is really designed for. So I'm thinking in my head, as I'm visualizing you, the learner, I'm, in, I'm visualizing either someone who is maybe at the high school level or just started college, someone who has been working on a computer for a while. I mean, you know how to get to the internet, you know how to get to your Gmail and your calendar and stuff, and you've heard of this term network. Uh, you know your computer has to be connected to a network to pretty much do almost anything, but beyond that, you don't really know what a network is. And as far as careers involving computer networks, you'd like to learn more about that. What does a career look like for someone who's working as a network administrator or network engineer? You know, how do you get from where you are now to that point? And what would that job look like? Or maybe it's somebody who's already got some sort of a career. You know, maybe you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, or even 50s or 60s, and you're just looking for a job change. You know, once again, you, you've worked with a computer on the basic stuff, but the same rules apply. You, you are thinking, well, you know, maybe computer networking would be a good idea. I've looked at some newspapers. I've looked at some articles. They say it's a good career field. It seems to be on the rise as far as employment's concerned. And I'd like to learn more about that. So this course is really for that type of a person. So these are the things I'm going to cover over the next several videos. I'm going to start out with, you know, what is a computer network? You might know the term, but you might not really be able to visualize what a network is. So we're going to go over some real high level basics of what is a computer network, what's it made out of. So we're going to talk about some of the components of a computer network. You know, what would you find in a computer network? What things you need to buy and hook together in order to make a computer network? Then I'm going to look at some of the technologies that comprise a network. For example, what is routing? What is switching? What is this thing called security and data center? These are all things that make up a network things that if you're going to become a network admin or network engineer, you might choose to specialize in. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about what do those terms mean and where do they fall within a network? You know, what do they help you as the end user actually do? Then I'm going to look at some computer networking job roles. We're going to talk about, you know, what is this thing called a network architect or a network engineer or a network admin or even just a network troubleshooting help desk? What's the differences between those careers? You know, what are the expectations that employers have of people who can do those types of job roles. And then I'm going to focus in on some networking job specialties. You know, if you're working, if you decide to go work for a really large corporation that has, you know, lots of campuses and lots of users, like thousands of employees, there's a very good chance that their network is so large that they can afford you the opportunity to specialize. You know, maybe you say, well, you know, now that I've sort of got this idea of what's different between security, collaboration, and routing and switching, I really like security. I'd like to sort of focus on that. So we'll talk about that. You know, what does it look like if you're a network engineer focusing on security? What does that look like? What would that job do on a day-to-day -day basis? And then lastly, I'm going to end up with where do I go from here? After watching this series, if you decide for yourself, you know what? I do want to take it to the next level. I want to start getting some knowledge, some information, so eventually I can put my resume out there and see if somebody will hire me. So how do I get from point A, where you are now, to point B, where you're ready to put that resume out and start interviewing for jobs? So that's what we're going to talk about. 
So as far as prerequisite knowledge is concerned, there really isn't any. In this particular course, um, I'm basically just assuming that you have the ability to work with a computer. Um, and you know what the internet is, and you've heard of this term network, you know you probably need to connect to it to do anything, but that's probably about it. So above and beyond that, any other knowledge you have is just, just gravy. So this class is actually taking place in front of a, a live group of learners who are watching via a streaming via the internet right now. So. As I go through here, I'm also monitoring when they post questions for me. So if you're watching this as a recording, you'll see that I will occasionally answer questions that come my way. Now, if after the recording is done, you still have some questions, there's a variety of ways to get those questions answered. Uh, number one, I would recommend that any questions that you, you have, you put them in a place where other people can benefit from your question and they can also benefit from the answer. So to that end, what I'd recommend doing is, uh, I'm assuming that you're an INE member if you're watching this. If not, becoming an INE member is absolutely free, doesn't cost anything. I will show you how to do it. Don't even have to put in a credit card. Just type in INE.com. And when you get to our site, over here in the upper right where it says log in, just click on that. And it should come up shortly. Now, in my case, it's, it's already automatically logging me in. But if you don't have a login, it might prompt you to register. So just go ahead and register with a username and password, an email address, and that's it. And that will get you here to what we call our members dashboard. And from here, you can see, for example, on the calendar, a listing of all of the live instructor-led boot camps we have coming up, as well as the online classes like this one that are coming up. But from the perspective of if you're watching any live class, this one or any other one, or you're watching a series of videos and you have a question about it, what do you do with your question? Well, number one, I'd recommend up here in the upper right where it says connect. If you click on connect, you'll see IEOC. That stands for the INE Online Community. So if we click on that, and then here, click on CCIE forums. Now, you might, you might be wondering, whoa, wait a second, I don't even know what a computer is, and you want me to talk to a CCIE? Don't worry. This is a link that will take you to a variety of different forums, not just for CCIEs. And then here we go. Um, so depending on the video or video series that you're watching, just pick something from this list, a forum that's appropriate to that level. So for example, in this particular video series I'm doing right now, it would probably be most appropriate if you went down to maybe the CCNA level. So right down here under CCNA and CCNP forms, you can see about six or seven down, there's one called CCNA. And you can just click on that and you can write a new post. Once again, free, don't have to pay for anything here. And there's hundreds of people that look at these posts. So if you have a question, I'd recommend putting it here first. And that way other people can benefit from your question and they can benefit from whatever response you received. Now in the unlikely event that you post something here and you don't get an answer after two or three days, which hardly ever happens, but let's say that happens. There are a couple of other ways you can contact me directly. Uh, you can see here, here's my email address at INE. So feel free to reach out to me with any questions you have. Just, just be aware that if I'm in the middle of teaching in class or developing a lab workbook or something, it might take me a few days to respond back to you. Uh, but I will, to the best of my ability, respond back to you. Also, here is my Twitter account. Uh, so you can follow me on Twitter, and people sometimes post questions for me on Twitter as well. And you can also find me on LinkedIn, which is another place where you can connect with me and just send me a message and, and ask me your questions.